a sort of autumnal tone that you can get into it. Wind up just sort of oozing all over everything around you, people included. You become convinced of why you've been so solitary. It's because nobody wants anything to do with you. <laughs> so, somewhere in there, which was about yesterday, you start to look around, take an interest in things, and have a good time. Everybody I know who plays started playing at a time when there wasn't anything else. It's impossible, but it's a nice uh, way to look at things. Because you know? the, the, the thing is, I don't know why this is, you, you think that to sound really good, you have to squeeze really hard. It doesn't matter, well, I'll show you. I'm barely squeezing. Now I'm really squeezing. It's nuts, you know? You, you just get excited and you, you just start grabbing it and ripping it. In. It's called the Pauling curve. It's a or, or before Pauling line is Pauling, it was called the curve point of diminishing returns, I suppose. I mean, he applied it to groups, like in this case groups of fingers. There's a point beyond which you're not gonna get any more for the amount of effort you're putting in. Relax. Reconcile yourself <laughs> with your instrument. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> The sixth oldest theater in New Hampshire a long time ago with Leon Redbone. And a bat got loose during his set and just circled him all through his set. Blow with his hat or something. The audience thought it was his bat. Boy, this was uh, 
in the first year that I was actually performing regularly. Uh, and uh, it was a coffee house, a little bitty coffee house. And, and all you could do was order a, a pizza that came in. It was about this big and you could, they had to put it in a, in a toaster back in the, the, the they called it the kitchen. And when the toaster was on, the fuse would blow and, and we'd be plunged into darkness while some glutton waited for their pizza. <laughs> Things just, you know, were, were sort of marginal there. It was sort of a lot of fun. It was a great place to play. And, but the, the, this was in Minneapolis and the city passed an ordinance that there would be no kissing in public. So the owner, who remains a good friend of mine, strapped on his pistol and got ready to enforce the code. <laughs> and unfortunately, I wasn't there the night that he approached some couple who were smooching, tapped the guy on the shoulder and said, none of that. And the guy took his gun away and hit him over the head with it. <laughs> spirit of the thing. <laughs> but this other guy, he never did anything. He just, I never even met him. I just knew he was back there somewhere. And one one room was the hip room. You'd play over there if you were hip, and I was in the square room uh, with a great outfit called the Persuasions, and I was lost. I was, you know, coming up on time for me to walk out, and I was lost because I'd gone back you know, this is also at the bottom of a huge hotel, so there's that basement full of boilers and crap that the hotel hasn't seen in 40 years. And I was trying to get over to the hip room to ask Larry Coriel, who's hip, uh, for something. I forget what it was. And I got lost. I didn't know either how to get to the hip room or back to the square room. I was trying to think what to do, and I was calling out. I was saying, hello? appropriate and I heard another voice say hello and it was Larry Coriel who has been trying to find the square room to uh, get an E string he figured I would have an E string square as I am I had to have one and we met up kind of still lost as I, as I recall and I hear this voice from far away I knew right away that it was the square room. I knew it was over there now, as opposed to, you know, now I had a direction. And the voice said, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage at Paul's Mall, Leo Cote. <laughs>